الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد Praise be to Allah We ask Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As I promised you brothers and sisters We will be embarking on this particular journey of Surat As-Safat One of my all-time favorite suwar from the Surah of the Book of Allah and the entirety of the Book of Allah is magnificent and miraculous. But this Surah, SubhanAllah, has a special impact and special rhythm and definitely some uh, devastating content. The uh, matters that the Surah addresses and some of the aspects of Yawm Al-Qiyamah and its affairs is something that will... That will basically have an effect on your heart, insha'Allah ta'ala. So let's uh, have uh, Mus'ab go ahead and begin reciting Barakallah Fiqh. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Wassafati saffa فالزاجرات زجرا فالتاليات ذكرا إن إلهكم لواحد رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما ورب المشارق إنا زينا السماء الدنيا بزينة الكواكب وحفظا من كل شيطان مارد لا يسمعون إلى الملأ الأعلى ويقذفون من كل جانب دحورا ولهم عذاب واصب إلا من خطف الخطفة فأتبعه شهاب ثاقب فاستفتهم أهم أشد خلقا أم من خلقنا إنا خلقناهم من طين لازب. <clears throat> By those angels lined up in rows, and those who drive the clouds, and those who recite the message, indeed your God is one, Lord of the heavens and the earth and that between them, and Lord of the sunrises. Indeed, we have adorned the nearest heaven with an adornment of stars and as protection against every rebellious devil. So they may not listen to the exalted assembly of angels and are pelted from every side, repelled, and for them is a constant punishment, except one who snatches some words by theft, but they are pursued by, burning f by a burning flame piercing in brightness. Then inquire of them, O Muhammad, are they a stronger or more difficult creation or those others we have created? Indeed, we created them, in other words, men from sticky clay. All right, Barakallah Feek. Uh, first, when you mention the Prophet Muhammad, do send Salah upon him, Barakallah Feek. And if it says IE, just say IE. There's no need to say in other words. But that was a good English rendering of uh, the Arabic, and I appreciate it. Uh, you could, you could, even in English, even in English, it's already captivating. Even in English, I mean, look at, look at, look at the part repelled, and for them is a constant punishment. Duhura walahum adabun wasib. Each, each ayah, subhanallah. Ala kulli hal. Hada qasamun minhu taala bil malaikati al kirami. في حال عبادتها وتدبيرها ما تدبره بإذن ربها على ألوهيته تعالى وربوبيته وربوبيته. This is an oath from Allah the Exalted on the angels, on the noble angels in their state of worship and in their state of them arranging whatever tasks Allah had allocated for them to arrange. Uh, pertaining to his divinity and pertaining to his lordship. So they are in rows, in rows of in service of their lord, and that is in reference to the malaika, the angels. 
فالزاجرات زجرا وهم الملائكة يزرون السحاب وغيره بأمر الله and it is the angels that are driving the clouds and other than that by the command of Allah فالتالياتي ذكرا وهم الملائكة وهم الملائكة الذين يتلون كلام الله تعالى uh, and those who recite the message you see, those are the angels that recite the words of Allah the exalted فلما كانوا متأليهين لربهم so when they were in the state of deifying their Lord وَمُتَعَبِّدِينَ فِي خِدْمَتِهِ and in the state of servitude in his service وَلَا يَعْصُونَهُ طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ and they don't disobey him they don't disobey Allah even the blink of an eye even the blink of an eye أَقْسَمَ بِهِمْ عَلَىٰ أُلُوهِيَّتِهِ Allah made an oath regarding them about his oneness فَقَالَ إِنَّ إِلَاهَكُمْ لَوَاحِدٍ Indeed your God is one لَيْسَ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْإِلَاهِيَّةِ He has no partners in his divinity. فَأَقْلِسُوا لَهُ الْحُبَّ وَالْخَوْفَ وَالرَّجَاءَ وَسَائِرَ أَنْوَاعِ الْعِبَادَةِ So be sincere to him in your love, in your fear, and in your hope, and the rest of the different types of acts of worship. So this is among the things that you guys should be taking note of. Hub is love. Hope is fear and raja is hope. And those are the three uh, fundamental acts of worship of the heart. And those are the three uh, uh, pillars of ibadah. And these are the ones that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah compared them to the bird with a head and two wings. So the head is the hub, And one wing is al khawf and the other wing is al raja and with those three, you're able to fly. If you don't have a head, you can't fly. If you have a broken wing, you can't fly. So for you to truly be worshiping Allah, your act of worship should be based on those three pillars, loving Allah, fearing Allah, and having hope in Allah's mercy and his reward. Listen, how, how, how can you emulate the Quran? I was I was reading earlier, what was it? The beginning of Surah Al-Furqan. There is no way anyone on earth, anyone on earth can, can produce anything like the Quran because no one else is Rabbul Alameen. You understand? Anybody who tries to say what's in the Quran will simply be laughable because it is not coming from Allah. تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض ولم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك وخلق كل شيء فقدره تقديرا واتخذوا من دونه آلهة لا يخلقون شيئا وهم يخلقون ولا يملكون لأنفسهم نفعا ولا ضرا ولا يملكون موتا ولا حياة ولا نشورا وقالوا أساطير الأولين اكتتبها فهي تملى عليه بكرة وأصيلة. You go on, you cannot, you cannot, nobody, nobody ever will ever be able to bring anything like the Quran because no one is رب العالمين except رب العالمين. ضرا ولا نفع. نعم. No one can do that but Allah جل جلاله وتقدس أسماء. So who, 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 you read these ayat and it's like yo. If anybody tried to say something like this, like, who are you? Who are you? You're a creation, man. Go sleep. Go sleep. You, you didn't create the heavens and the earth, and you're not the one who didn't take a, a sun, and you're not the one who, you know, created everything and decreed it in a particular matter. You're not, you're not Allah. You're not the one who sent down the furqan, the, the criteria upon a slave, so he could warn the people. None of these will apply to any entity. Look at this here. رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما ورب المشارق Lord of the heavens and the earth and that between them Lord of the sun rises The Sheikh said أي هو الخالق لهذه المخلوقات He is the creator of those creations الرازق لها The provider Their provider المدبر لها The arranger of its affairs فَكَمَا أَنَّهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ فِي رُبُوبِيَّتِهِ إِيَّهَا Just like Allah has no partners in His Lordship to these creations, 
فكذلك لا شريك له في ألوهيته. Similarly, he has no partners in his divinity, i.e., in him being worshipped and deified alone. وكثيرا ما يقرر تعالى توحيد الإلهية بتوحيد الرم بتوحيد الربوبية. Very frequently does Allah link and connect the oneness of His divinity with the oneness of His lordship. لأنه دال عليه because it is indicative of it. Meaning the rububiyya is indicative of uluhiyya. وقد أقر به أيضا المشركون في العبادة. And also the uh, the polytheists themselves have acknowledged that in worship. فيلزمهم بما أقر به على فيلزمهم بما أقر به على ما أنكروا. So you you force them to acknowledge that which they are denying now based on that which they've acknowledged. Meaning, meaning they acknowledge rububiyya, so use that against them to let them acknowledge uluhiyya. وَخَصَّ اللَّهُ الْمَشَارِقَ بِالذِّكْرِ لِدَلَالَتِهِ عَلَى المغارب. Allah specified the mashariq with the sun rises because it's already inclusive of the sunsets. أو لأنها مشارق النجوم التي سيذكرها. Or it could be because this is the sunrises, the the sunrises of the stars, or the مشارق, the uh, the the west, the east, that he will mention later. So he said, إن زينا فلهذا قال إن زينا السماء الدنيا بزينة الكواكب وحفظا من كل شيطان مارد لا يسمعون إلى الملأ الأعلى ذكر الله في الكواكب هاتين الفائدتين العظيمتين الله منشن concerning the, uh, the stars those two particular benefits إحداهما one of which is كونها زينة للسماء the fact that it is an adornment it is an adornment for the sky إذ لولاها because had it not been for those stars لكانت السماء لكانت السماء جرما مظلما لا ضوء فيه the 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 sky would have been a dark entity with no light in it ولكن زينها فيها but Allah adorned the sky with the stars لتستنير أرجاؤها وتحسن صورتها so that it will illuminate its edges and sides and it will beautify its image ويهتدى بها في ظلمات البر والبحر and you use it as guides in the darknesses of the land and the sea people basically use the stars to find their destination ويحصل فيها من المصالح ما يحصل and all types of benefits which are uh, obtained because of that والثانية, والثانية the second benefit حراسة السماء عن كل شيطان مارد it is the security and the protection of the sky against every rebellious devil يصل بتمرده إلى استماع الملأ الأعلى who's able to reach with his rebellious state the uh, angels that are closest to Allah the closest assembly the, ex the exalted assembly of angels near to Allah وهم الملائكة that is the angels إذا استمعت قذفتها بالشهب الثواقب so when those rebellious devils listen then the shayati then basically the angels they they uh, they throw at them the burning flame. They, they, they throw at them, they pursue them by a burning flame. Min kulli janib, from every, from every side, and from every, uh, from every side. Tardan lahum wa ib'adan an istima'i ma yaqulu al ala As means of keeping them away and to distance them from hearing what the exalted assembly of angels is saying uh, closest to Allah. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ وَاصِبٌ And they will have a constant punishment. أَيْ دَائِمٌ مُعَدٌ لَهُمْ لِتَمَرُّدِهِمْ عَنْ طَاعَةِ رَبِّهِمْ Meaning it will be perpetual, it will be, it will be constant, and it is prepared for them as a, as a result of their rebellious, rebelliousness, or rebellion, sorry, rebellion against the obedience of their Lord. وَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ تَعَالَ اسْتَثْنَى Had Allah not made that exception, لكان ذلك دليلا على أنهم لا يستمعون شيئا أصلا It would have been an evidence that they can't hear anything at all in the first place ولكن قال However Allah said إلا من خطف الخطفة Except one who snatches some words by theft أي من تلقف من الشياطين المردة الكلبة الواحدة على وجه الخفية والسرقة The one who's able to basically snatch from the shayateen The rebellious shayateen as a word One single word 
and he does so in a, in, in the uh, in a manner where it's done secretly and like in theft. فأتبعه شهاب ثاقب تارة يدركه قبل أن يوصلها إلى أوليائه فينقطع خبر السماء. So then they are they have this burning flame uh, that is piercing in brightness pursue them. So sometimes it catches them before they deliver it to their allies, and so they that cuts off the news from the skies. وتارة وتارة يخبر بها قبل أن يدركه الشهاب. And sometimes he's able to inform and convey what he heard from the exalted assembly before the shahab the the flame catches it and this is as per the hadith so they lie with this one piece of truthful information a hundred lies and they use it now to basically prop, uh, uh, propagated among their among the foolish people that listen to them based on a word that they heard from the exalted assembly so how does that work basically the arraf or the soothsayer or the fortune teller that's actually what they do they have jinn who try to do yastarik samir who steal who steal a, a, a word that they hear from the malaika regarding matter of the matters of the unseen they give it to this person this person mixes it with a hundred lies and then he tells his victim you know, one piece of information that is actually correct. And then a person is like fascinated and, and uh, overwhelmed with the uh, ability of the Arraf. So they basically fall into all types of kufr and shirk by following soothsayers and horoscopes and all kinds of garbage. And they live this life of a, of a feather in the wind. The believer is like a palm tree grounded in the, in the earth grounded like a peg of a tent is not moved or swayed by the things that move and sway the disbelievers and the people with weak iman who are like feathers in the wind their whole life is based on lucky this who unlucky that who lucky seven who unlucky 13 who uh, i was in malaysia in malaysia they have a problem with the number four they with the number four Turns out that the Chinese have a problem with the number four. So the elevator had one, two, three, three A, and then five. I was like, yo, there was no four. There was no 14. There was no 24. Man, I'm, I was like, dude, it's an elevator. You see what kind of, how, this is like an engineer. A dude who's supposed to be smart and figured out how to put an elevator together. But his belief and his feeble-mindedness is such that uh, they don't want the number four in anything. And then you get to the, you know, you go to the West and then they ha you have the problem with the 13. Look how they live. They live based on, on all of these fears because they don't believe in Allah. And Allah Azza wa says about the believers, Allah will keep firm those who believe with the firm statement in the dunya and in the akhirah. Al-Muhim. You live and you see things and you're like, wow. Alhamdulillah for Islam. Alhamdulillah for Islam. Allah is so merciful to us that he made us Muslims. We don't have to go through any of this stuff. I don't know, no, no horoscopes. So, uh, go to the Arab world. Go to the Arab world. The first thing that they ask you when they want to meet someone, eh, uh, you know, that reminds me of, of uh, once we were with a person that was huge, like a very huge person. We were all in the elevator, and, and someone asked him. Uh, they said, "Oh, what's your horse? What's your like uh, horoscope? Is that what they say? Like, what's your burj?" And he said, uh, uh, "Al Hoot, the whale." Huh? And I, I looked at him like, "Yo, how do I keep? How do I hold this laugh inside and not not just bust out laughing? Like, <laughs> seriously, like, mashallah. There's quite a resemblance between the the burj and the person." Uh, so, you know, uh, that's how the people go. Oh, they say, oh, you're a Thor, you're a bull. Zodiac sign. There you go. Zakullah khair. Oh, you're a bull. Oh, it means you're like this, you're like that. Well, I am that. I'm a, I'm a Jedi, uh, Capricorn. So, you know, we're compatible or we're not. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Wake up. 
horoscope and read it. People read it all. Oh, tomorrow you're going to see a, a monkey is going to give you a banana. All day they are in the zoo. Why are you in the zoo? Because it said that I'm going to see a monkey is going to give me a banana. Ya, akhi, enta, you're a monkey. Aslan, arja ala al cage haggak. Rayyah joz khaltak. Al muhim. How did we get here? Uh... أي ولما بين هذه المخلوقات العظيمة قال فاستفتهم أي اسأل منكري خلقهم بعد موتهم. So after Allah mentioned those great creations, Allah said فاستفتهم. So ask them, meaning ask the deniers of their creation after their death, meaning those who will uh, deny their resurrection basically. أهم أشد خلقا أي إيجادهم بعد موتهم أشد خلقا وأشق is bringing them uh, is bringing them back is bringing them back after their death أشد خلقا is it a uh, uh, more difficult is it more difficult أما خلقنا من هذه المخلوقات or what we have created of these creations فلا بد أن يقروا أن خلق السماوات والأرض أكبر من خلق الناس. They have to admit that the creation of the heavens and the earth is greater than the creation of man, as we established in the other surah the other day, and as we answered in the Q and A session when that question was asked. They will admit that the creation of the heavens and the earth is greater than the creation of man. Look at the vastness of the universe, and look at the vastness of of the the land. What are you but a tiny little atom? Uh, in this vast creation of Allah. فيلزمهم إذن الإقرار بالبعث. فيلزمهم عفوا إذن الإقرار بالبعث. So now they are forced by necessity to acknowledge resurrection. بل لو رجعوا إلى أنفسهم وفكروا فيها. Rather if they even looked into themselves and reflected upon it. لعلموا أن ابتداء خلقهم من طين لازم أصعب عند الفكر من إنشائهم بعد موتهم. They would have known that creating them being created from sticky clay is actually more difficult is actually more difficult than the idea of them being resurrected after their death for you a human being and i was watching the other day on on some social media platform i think it was instagram reels or something they were showing at which uh, they were putting a tooth a human tooth under a pressure machine I think it was at 600 something kilograms of pressure that the tooth finally the tooth finally got crushed. Imagine 600 plus kilogram of pressure. Yo, you put anything else at at 5 10 kg, it's it's getting crashed and smashed and demolished. The human tooth which when you're born, you don't even have. You don't even have teeth. You were a sperm. How in the world did from a sperm drop, just, just listen, how in the world from a sperm drop, from liquid, came bones and teeth that require a pressure of 600 plus kg to crush? Who made you? Who made you? Who made you like this? Who made you have the form that you have? This beautiful creation of Allah, not me. All of y'all, human being. The nose, the eyes, the mouth, the ears, the head, the hands. Ishhada. Ajib. Wallah, we are ajib. We are absolutely amazing. The biggest evidence for Allah's existence. And you have an atheist come along and say, Wuda dulu balaha. روح يا كذاب أنت كذاب. Look in the mirror, you know that Allah is حق. Look in the mirror and you should say لا إله إلا الله. ما ينفع. There are things that you can't deny. You cannot deny. Look at the teeth of the human being, man. Were you able to eat with them? سبحان الله. عجيب والله والله عجيب. Anything you reflect on, any any body part that you study and reflect on, you will be baffled. You will be
Yeah, we're moving. What's the mic on straight? All right. This one? Mm-hmm. All right, we're back. It was never recording in the first place. This is still recording. No, I mean, the audacity? Yeah. yeah. No? No, it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe it's this one. Is it, oh, it's recording now, sir? Okay, tell them. Sorry, guys. We don't know what's going on, man. Yeah, alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. So the the atheists just, you know, atheists be playing games, man. Al muhim. So you look at yourself in the mirror and you believe in la ilaha illallah as a byproduct. So what he had that call, inna khalaqnahu min tin lazib ay qawiyon shadidun ka qawlihi ta'ala wa laqad khalaqna al insana min salsal min hama'in masnoon. So it is, it is uh, the sheikh said it is sticky, strong clay. Just like Allah said in the other ayah, we very you have created a human from a basically sticky clay. Tamam. Uh, now come some powerful ayat also. Go ahead, Ya Musab. وقالوا إن هذا إلا سحر مبين أإذا متنا وكنا ترابا وعظاما أإنا لمبعوثون أو آباؤنا الأولون قل نعم وأنتم داخرون فَإِنَّمَا هِيَ زَجْرَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ فَإِذَا هُمْ يَنْظُرُونَ وَقَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا هَذَا يَوْمُ الدِّينِ هَذَا يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تُكَذِّبُونَ But you wonder while they mock, and when they are reminded, they remember not. And when they see a sign, they ridicule and say, this is not but obvious magic. When we have died and become, when we have died and become dust and bones, are we indeed to be resurrected? And our forefathers as well say, yes, and you will be rendered contempt, contemptible. It will be only one shout and at once they will be observing. They will say, oh, woe to us. This is the day of recompense. They will be told, this is the day of judgment which you used to deny. Subhanallah al azim You saw you saw this? Look, look, it's only three words. It's three words. But mashaAllah. Bal ajibta wa yaskharun. But you wonder while they mock. The Sheikh said, أيها الرسول عجبت أيها الرسول أو أيها الإنسان من تكذيب من كذب ببعث Meaning you wonder, O oh messenger, or O oh human being, from the denying of the one who denies resurrection. بعد أن أريتهم من الآيات العظيمة والأدلة المستقيمة After I have showed them of the great signs and the upright evidences. And indeed, it is it is a state, it is a valid condition of wonders, of wonder and amazement. Because it is something that does not entertain or allow any type of denial. وَأَعْجَبُ مِنْ إِنْكَارِهِمْ وَأَبْلَغُ مِنْ And what is even more amazing and more, more wondrous than their denial أَنَّهُمْ يَسْخَرُونَ is that they are also mocking مِمَّنْ جَاءَ بِالْخَبَرِ عَنِ الْبَعْثِ They mock the person who brings the information about the, the resurrection فَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ مُجَرَّدُ الْإِنْكَارِ حَتَّى زَادُ السُّخْرِيَةَ بِالْقَوْلِ الْحَقِّ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ it wasn't sufficient for them to merely deny, 
But on top of that, they increase with mocking the words of truth. And this, gentlemen, ladies and brothers and sisters, is the condition of the disbelievers all over the world. Not only do they reject Islam, but they also mock the deen of Allah and they mock the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and they mock the Muslims. Not only do they have this kufr, but as Allah said, بَلْ عَجِبْتَ وَيَسْخَرُونَ وَإِذَا ذُكِّرُوا لَا يَذْكُرُونَ وَمِنَ الْعَجَبِ أَيْضًا And what is even amazing, more amazing and more wondrous, أَنَّهُمْ That day, إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا If and when they are reminded, مَا يَعْرِفُونَ فِي فِطَرِهِمْ وَعُقُولِهِمْ When they're reminded of that which they know in their natural disposition, and that which they know in their intellect and minds, وَفَطِنُوا لَهُ وَلَفَتَ نَظَرَهُمْ إِلَيْهِ And they've, they've become aware of it and their attention was drawn to it. لا يذكرون They don't remember. ذلك فإن كان جهلا فهو من أدل الدلائل على شدة بلادتهم العظيمة If this is out of ignorance that it's a sign of how great they're lame, how lame they are. The level of lameness is unprecedented. حيث ذكروا ما هو مستقر في الفطر wherein they were reminded of what is instilled in the natural innate معلوم بالعقل known to the intellect لا يقبل الإشكال there's no room for any dispute regarding it وإن كان this is if they're ignorant وإن كان تجاهلا وعنادا but if it's done out of ignoring on purpose and stubbornness فهو أعجب وأغرب then it is even more amazing and stranger ومن العجب أيضا أنهم إذا أقيمت عليهم الأدلة and what is also amazing is that when the evidences are established against them وذكر الآيات التي يخضع لها فحول الرجال وألباب الألباء الألباء and when they are reminded of the ayat which will subdue the the strongest most powerful of men and the most intellectual of people their reaction and their stance is that they mock it and they are uh, uh, they wonder regarding it. Uh, and among the amazing things also is that them, them saying to the truth when it's brought to them, in this is not but obvious magic. فجعلوا أعلى الأشياء وأجلها وهو الحق في رتبة أخس الأشياء وأحقرها لا إله إلا الله. so they made the loftiest of matters and the most noble which is the truth they made it at the same level of the most lowly of things and the most belittled. ومن العجب أيضا look at this look at this it's back to back and among the wondrous and strange things also. قياسهم قدرة رب الأرض والسماوات على قدرة الآدمي الناقص من جميع الوجوه. Their comparison of the ability of the Lord of the heavens and the earth with the ability of the human being who's deficient in every respect. فقالوا استبعادا وإنكارا. So they said out of far-fetchfulness and out of denial. أإذا متنا وكنا ترابا وعظاما إنا لمبعوثون أو آباؤنا الأولون. وَلَمَّا كَانَ هَذَا مُنْتَهَا مَا عِنْدَهُمْ وَغَايَةَ مَا لَدَيْهُمْ And this was all that they had to offer. And the, and the, 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 the gist of what they have to say, أَمَرَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ أَنْ يُجِيبَهُمْ بِجَوَابٍ مُشْتَمِرٌ عَلَى تَرْهِيبِهِمْ Allah commanded His Prophet وسلم, to respond to them with a response that will scare them. فَقَالَ قُلْ نَعَمْ Say to them, yes, سَتُبْعَثُونَ أَنْتُمْ وَأَبَاؤُكُمُ الْأَوَّلُونَ You and your forefathers, your early forefathers, your former forefathers, all of y'all, all of y'all will be resurrected. وَأَنْتُمْ دَاخِرُونَ And you will be ذَلِيلُونَ صَاغِرُونَ لَا تَمْتَنِعُونَ You'll be belittled and humiliated and you will not be able to resist. وَلَا تَسْتَعْصُونَ عَلَىٰ قُدْرَةِ اللَّهِ And you will not be able to object or to deny or to resist or to stop or to be disobedient to the command of Allah and to the ability of Allah. You will be forced to come and to be gathered with the rest of mankind. There's absolutely no escape that you have. فَإِنَّمَا هِيَ زَجْرَةٌ وَاحِدًا يَنْفُخُ إِسْرَافِيلُ فِيهَا فِي الصُّورِ 
it is no more than one shout, which is when Israfil will blow into the horn. Where Israfil will blow into the horn or the trumpet. Both could be used as a translation. فَإِذَا هُمْ مَبْعُوثُونَ مِنْ قُبُورِهِمْ All of a sudden, they will all be resurrected from their graves. يَنْظُرُونَ And they will be observing. They'll be looking. كَمَا بْتُدِئَ كَمَا بْتُدِئَ خَلْقُهُمْ Just like their creation was started or it was initiated. بُعِثُوا بِجَمِيعِ أَجْزَائِهِمْ حُفَاتًا عُرَاتًا غُرْلًا they will be resurrected with all their body parts. Now, who could translate those three words? Yalla. I have a feeling that Awliya Al-Mukhlisin already knows the answer. And maybe uh, Sarah. And maybe who else usually is on point? And also Amatullah. Amatullah usually has two out of three. Or she misses one. Who could translate Hufatan Uratan Gurla? Fufuz? Possibly. We'll give him a chance. I doubt it though. Fufuz is the master of asking questions that I cannot answer. Oh, we forgot about Faris. Uh, destitute? W what does that mean? The last one is incorrect. Unless, unless. I don't know what the word destitute means. Barefooted is correct. Hufatan, barefooted. Uratan, naked. Ghurla is uncircumcised. Ghurlan is uncircumcised. Yeah, destitute is not. Ghurlan is uncircumcised. Well, and when the Prophet وسلم, said that, Aisha said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, men and women, men and women, he said, ya, ya, ya bint -siddiq, inna al -amra ashadda min dhalik. He said, Oh, bint Siddiq, the matter is more severe than that. She said, The men and women will look at each other. He said, Oh, bint Siddiq, the matter will be greater than that. وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَى وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَى You see the people look, appear to be intoxicated and they're not intoxicated. وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ But the punishment of Allah will be severe. The punishment of Allah will severe. People won't even care that other people are naked. People won't even care that other people are naked. This is how severe the matter. A person will be naked from top to bottom. No one will even bother. No one will even bother to check out the other person. Everybody will be concerned about what's next for me. Where am I going? What's going to happen to me? Even if he sees his wife. He sees his children. Everybody will say, Nafsi, Nafsi, myself, myself. On the day where a man will run from his, from his, uh, his brother. And his wife. And his children. And everybody. You will run away from everybody. And you will be looking for every good deed. Everyone, every single good deed that you could find. You'll be running after it and fetching forward. You want it by any means necessary. That's why... That's why, as painful as it is, when people uh, slander the people of da'wah, as painful as it is to be accused of hypocrisy, to be accused of being an agent, to be called the bootlicker, to be called the dog of a taghut, to be called whatever names people call, as painful as it is because you're a human being with feelings, as lovely as it is on Yawm al-Qiyamah. Because on Yawm al-Qiyamah, all of these keyboard warriors will have to be brought and they will have to make payments. They will have to make payments for those statements. They will have to pay back. They will be payback. Ta'al, ta'al, give me back my right. When the receipts will be brought forward and Allah will make it known among Ru'us al-Ashhad that we are not agents and we're not getting paid by any entity. And that we do this strictly fi sabilillah. No one tells us what to say and what not to say and what to do, what not to do. Allah knows. And on the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal will make that clear for the people that have slandered others simply because they're trying to follow the sunnah 
in regards to how to deal with the people in charge because that is the biggest fitna of today right now. And because of that, we've been slandered in ways that you can't even, unimaginable. On the day of judgment, say, ta'al. And these people will have to pay. They will have to pay from their own good deeds. And if they were to run out of good deeds, then our sins, which I have plenty of, I have plenty of, and that's why I'm happy. I have plenty of evil deeds. May Allah forgive me. Those evil deeds will be taken from me and they will be placed on those people. When if the payback is not enough, and we warned them, I, I warned them, I told them in the zoo, yeah, bro, bro, chillax, man. Look, man, I have beef with a lot of people in da'wah. I have beef with Daniel Hakikachu, Omar Sulaiman, Yasir Qadi, and but I don't dare to say that they're agents, even though they might be very good reasons and signs that may suggest that I fear, I fear slander. I fear slander. If they do something wrong, I will call them out. If they deviate, I will call them out. If they mislead the people, I will call them out. That's a different story. There's no slander there. We don't just say anything out of our head. Everything we say is substantiated with evidence based on something that they said. So refutation is part of the deen. But for me to suggest that that person is an actual agent, in spite of having signs, wallahi, I fear Allah to say that. Even though, even though it could be justified. Why? Because I don't want to come on Day of Judgment and give my good deeds to Daniel Hakiga too. Assuming that, you know, claiming that he was an agent because maybe he's not. Maybe he's not. So, people have no problem in calling us these things and, and swearing by Allah that we are agents when they have absolutely no proof for it. Except, you know, he say, she say, and except rumors and except, you know, whatever people say about us. So Yawm Al-Qiyamah will be a day where all this, uh, you know, all this would be brought forward. And so if you're involved in da'wah and you get slandered, it's okay. It's okay. Hang in there. Uh, uh, your day will come, inshallah, when you will get those deeds back because you will need them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. All of us will need those de deeds on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Allah Al-Musta'an. On that day, though, they will they will show now their, their regret, their humiliation, their loss. Where they will call themselves, they will call destruction upon themselves and what have you. And they So they will acknowledge and admit that thing which they used to focus, or that thing which I read Yallah focus, so I said focus. They will acknowledge that which they used to mock and make fun of in the dunya. فيقال لهم يقول بسات دم هذا يوم الفصل بين العباد فيما بينه وبين ربه من الحقوق وفيما بينه وبين غيره من الخلق. So this is the day of fصل, which is the day of of basically uh, how does it said here? The day of judgment. Actually, that's not an accurate translation. This is in Sahih International, and that is not an actual actual uh, that is not an accurate translation because يوم الفصل is not يوم الحساب أو يوم الدين. Yawm al din is possibly the day of judgment. Yawm al-Hisab is the day of judgment. But Yawm al-Fasl is the day of division. It's the day of basically uh, uh, dividing between the people and, and uh, judging between the people. Maybe that's why they use the term judgment. Never mind. I take it back. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that's possibly the meaning they were referring to. Tafsil bayna nas meaning you divide between them, but that division is based on a judgment. hal, It will be on that day where there will be a judgment between the slaves between the slaves and their Lord, and between uh, the people and, and the other creation, which is what I was referring to earlier. No, Habib, Fasl, the word, the word Fasl has tens of meanings in the Arabic language. Fasl uh, al-Shita or Fasl al-Rabiya is, yes, Fasl is also a season, but obviously the context right now is not talking about that. This is Yawm al-Fasl. It appears in Surah al-Mursalat also, no? Or Mursalat al-Urfa. I believe so, the word fasl also appears in, in other places in the Quran. So no, fasl here is that al-fasl bayna al-nas ay al-hukum bayna al-nas wa ma ila thalik. Type. With this, inshallah, we conclude. Let's open a Q&A. We are at ayah number 22, uh, which will be another power, powerful ayat. Powerful ayat. Allahu Akbar. What's going on? Yalla ya hujjaj bayt Allah al-haram.
Uh, and my question is, if we say Allah descends to the lowest heaven, does that mean Allah is inside or enters the inside his creation? H2K, those are questions that are not allowed to be asked. Those are questions that are not allowed to be asked. These are philosophical questions that the Sahaba did not ask the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ was more knowledgeable than I am. And the Sahaba were more keen than you are. And the keenest people on learning had available to them the most knowledgeable of Allah. And they never had this conversation. So neither should we. That's why when Imam, when Imam Malik was asked, How did the most merciful rise over the throne? He started sweating. He became angry. He said, Al-Istiwa ma'loom. Istiwa is known in the language. Wal kayfu majul. And how it is unknown. Wal imanu bihi wajib. And believing in it is obligatory. Was su'alu anhu bid'an. Asking this question is an innovation. And he commanded that this man was thrown out of the masjid. So we, these are philosophical questions. Your job and my job is to believe Allah descends to the lowest heaven. End of story. How and enters and, and exits. All this, all of these the uh, uh, discussions do not belong in the discussion of Allah Azza wa Jal when you speak about Allah. This is a philosophical question that a believer does not ask, does not bother with, does not concern himself with. Your job is to believe that Allah descends to the lowest heaven exactly as Allah said in a manner that befits his majesty. And he asks, Hal min Is there anyone asking for forgiveness so I can forgive him? Hal min Is there anyone asking so I could give him? Ila akhiri. Now. How do we make our Qareen as weak as possible? By maintaining the athkar of the morning and the evening and the athkar of the various affairs and times and by remembering Allah Azza wa Jal abundantly. Uh, briefly, why shouldn't a layman listen to Imam Al-Ghazali? Because Imam Al-Ghazali Al -Imam Al -Ghazali was an Ash'ari Sufi. Briefly, that's why. Next. Uh, he had a part two, no? Okay, forget it. Uh, is... What? Ustadu? Is... Hawlaw? Hawloi? That has pork gelatin halalu? <laughs> is hawlaw? I don't know what that is. Some say it's it is because the ingredients that uh, that has pork in the, it has been processed so much the point apart. Bottom line is some of the scholars they say that yani the, the concept of istihlal or the the transformation of an element from one uh, chemical state to another. If it goes through such a transition, such a chemical transformation where you cannot reverse it, then yes, the ruling changes. But anyways, that's a technical question. You need a mufti for it now. Uh, if I just read PDF, if I just read PDF, not share them nor make copies, am I considered sinful in, in any of the views regarding copyright or am I safe? Uh, the matter of copyright is actually very uh, com com complicated and I'm not really, uh, I'm not really good at it. Now, uh, when to use Ghafar Allahu Lak, is it like Jazakallah Khairan? Also, when to use Hayak Allah and what to respond to it? Type. Ghafar Allah lak, obviously, let's just translate them because when you know the translation, you will know the meaning. Ghafar Allah lak, you say this when someone might have uh, wronged you. If someone wronged you, usually say, Ghafar Allah lak, may Allah forgive you for having wronged something because the context. Versus Jazakallah khairan, may Allah reward you with good. That's usually a, a statement that you say when someone does something good for you. Hayyak Allah is said when you, when you meet someone, the initial meeting of someone, and then usually the response is, Allah hayyik. Allah hayyik. And the meaning of hayyak Allah could be that may Allah give you life. It could be that may Allah greet you. May basically tahiyyatuhum yawma yalqawnahu salam. So that Allah gives you basically the greeting of peace in Jannah and so on and so forth. Now, uh, we know the hadith regarding the best thing to have for suhoor for a believer is tamar. Is, there, is this a specific date or would any date suffice? Uh, also, have you ever been to Canada, Ustad? And as far as I know, any date will do the job. Uh, and there's special mention uh, and uh, of Rutab as being yani, the, the better kind of dates in general. Uh, no, I've never been to Canada. Um, I've been invited a few times, but it always conflicted with other, other either 
other things. So I've, I haven't really had the chance to go there now. Uh, in my Muslim, in my community, most families sit together before iftar where one person reads dua and others listen. Is it permissible or is it better for me to make to make their own dua? Of course, it's better for them to make their own dua. That, that is like, that is so much like the Christians right now. Well, wait, what do they call it? Grace? Yeah, where someone says grace and then, they, you know, they hold their hands together or they go like this. Uh, uh, our father uh, in heaven, uh, hallow thou be your name. Thank you for giving us uh, this pizza and four burgers and two french fries. I mean, the Christians are, are the funniest people. <laughs> they don't even, and they almost never take this dua seriously. It's always like a joke for them. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm emulating them. But uh, that's not how a Muslim behaves. So this idea of someone at Iftar making dua and everybody's making, uh, uh, saying ameen with them is very much similar and resemblance of Christians. And we're not supposed to resemble the kuffar and the disbeliever in any, or the disbelievers in any way, shape or form. Just do you, make your own dua and keep moving. Ishada. Wa alaikum salam. So Allah can forgive you, but if you wrong someone else, like regarding a person's own rights on Yawm al-Qiyamah, if they choose not to forgive you, that's the final decision. Yeah. If they choose not to forgive you, you have to pay them back. How to balance between seeking knowledge and reciting the uh, Holy Quran during Ramadan? Whoa, 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 Abid, Abid. It looks like you are new to the channel. We have a newcomer. Barakallah feek. There is no such thing as Holy Quran. I've made clips about this. Please refer to them. The Quran is holy, but we don't call it holy Quran like the Christians say holy Bible. Again, what is it with us in Christians today? Uh, the noble Quran, uh, how do you balance between seeking knowledge and, and, and reciting the Quran? Reciting the Quran is an act of seeking knowledge. Just open the tafsir. So pers personally, when I read the Quran, I, I use the Quran on my phone and I've downloaded on my phone all types of tafsir. So anytime I, I come across an ayah that requires more clarification, I open the tafsir and I read the tafsir of Tabari, Ibn Kathir, Al-Baghawi, uh, whatever. Whatever tafsir I have, sometimes the uh, Asbab al-Nuzul, sometimes Arab, sometimes language. Uh, I look at, this is an element of seeking knowledge. That you could actually do both, Barakallah Feek. Or you could just, if you're talking about other things like memorizing hadith or whatever, just dedicate, allocate time for this and time for that. But in Ramadan, your focus should be on the, memory, the, the recitation of the Quran more so than the acquisition of knowledge. Uh, how often and when should we recite the 10 ayat of Surah Al-Kahf to protect us from Dajjal? And every Fard prays final tahashud or tashahud tash, 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 or just once a week. Habibi, you recite, you, you just need to memorize them in case you come across the Dajjal, you use them. You need to memorize them and in, in case you come across the Dajjal, you use them to protect yourself from the Dajjal. You don't have to recite them all the time. But naturally, when you recite Surah Al-Kahf every Jumu'ah, every Friday, you wind up reciting those 10 ayat as well. Now, Mustafa's too loud. We already answered that. We already answered that. Uh, some brothers say that they, they would, could never perform offensive uh, J under a Muslim ruler. They gave bay'ah to unless it's the Mahdi. What is the ruling? What? Why can't they do it? If there's a if there's a Muslim ruler who calls you to go out and fight in the cause of Allah, you are obliged to comply and go and fight in the cause of Allah, whether it is the Mahdi or not. The ruling is that these people are tripping. For memorization and muraja purposes, is it permissible to listen to Quran on my headset while doing work or other activities? Yani, that's fine. Some of the scholars allow it. Some of the scholars say you don't want the Quran to play in the background where you're oblivious to what, what is being said. So if you're doing work, are you able to reconcile between focusing on work and hearing the book of Allah at the same time? That's on you. Now, flight as proof of travel without the intention of traveling and the intention of canceling it after I get my passport. So I can, I can get my passport. And I have no Next. Is it a bid'ah to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka afiyah, dua after every taslim? Of course it is a bid'ah. Is it true that there's a hadith that says, if we accidentally swallowed an ant in our drinks or food, we'll be dumb and become an idiot for 40 days? I've never come across this hadith. I've never come across this hadith. Allahu alam. 
why has Allah privileged humanity far above many of his creatures per kalam Allah surat al-Isra? Why? لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون Allah doesn't get asked why he does things and you get asked. Is paying an extra fee due to late payment considered riba? Yes. Is it alright to take knowledge from Ustaz Abdul Aziz Al-Haqqan and to encourage others to take knowledge from him also? Absolutely. Naam. Is it wajib to pray jama'ah at the masjid? Or can I pray jama'ah at home given I can't hear the adhan from the masjid at home and it's 15 minutes walking distance? Yeah, you can pray at home. You don't have to pray in the jama'ah. Is it permissible to return salam while in wudu and to give the salam to someone in wudu? Yes. Yes, it is permissible to return the salam and to give salam while making wudu. Please like the video to help boost the algorithm. Heart. How to advise relatives who deny everything in Bukhari Muslim being authentic? <laughs> by, by, by trying to understand how they're Muslim still. Because if they don't believe in Bukhari Muslim, so they don't believe in the other uh, hadith by default. And therefore they are Sunnah rejectors. So how can a Sunnah rejector still be a Muslim? That's something to marvel about. You're not even a Muslim anymore. If you don't believe in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. So you really have to give him da'wah from zero. And watch my lecture, The Philosophers. The Philosophers, which addresses this uh, bid'ah of not believing in the sunnah. Now, Is it permissible for me to give khutbah on Friday? And then lead the prayer, even though I know that there's someone who has memorized more of the Quran than me? Yes, it is permissible. If we call these people of fitna who attack the Salafiyun agents just based off speculation, is it enough to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do we make dua for these people too? No, it's it's you make tawbah and you you deliver and you you just like you publicly call them agents, publicly retract. Just like you publicly call them angels, publicly retract. To say I, I take back anything I've said doesn't mean that I agree with you now, but if I've called you an agent, I take it back. Your affair is with Allah. Khalas. Buy your security and your safety. At which point do you warn uh, someone about a personal matter, such as when they are considering doing business with a particular individual without it being considered backbiting? Uh, when that information becomes necessary for the decision making. Now. I listen to your videos a lot and I love you for the sake of Allah. May the one whom you love me for love you, Ya Shadi and Hani Rikani. Uh, Barakallah Fiq. Zakallah Khair. Uh, you recite like Salman al Utaybi, Allah Mabarak. Me and Mus'ab. Taib, Zakallah Khair. Sorry, Ustad. Sorry, Abid. We're still with this guy. The corrected sentence would be, are fighting games like Tekken and Street Fighter haram? They involve punching in the face female models with exposed aura and background music. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad Tim Humble has a very good response. I came across it, I don't know where, where he answered the question about playing games. And he broke it down into what would be allowed and what would not be allowed. Please refer to it. Now. Hello, Akhi. Hello, Donnie. Does Ahlul Bidah... Does Ahlul Bid'ah or do Ahlul Bid'ah have anything from the Quran and Sunnah to support their belief? Yeah, they have mutashabih. They have ambiguous ayat and ambiguous ahadith that they understand according to their own desires to uh, lead them to the lead themselves astray and lead others astray. Of course. Yalla hujjaj. Abi Akhul. Is it a legit opinion that Ayat Qadr is always the 27th night? Uh, if not, what should we say to advise people that believe it is? It is a legit opinion. It is a legit opinion and it is based on the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Qudri. That it is the 27th. So that's a legit opinion. If somebody wants to believe that, that's on them. Can you guys close this door? Because I hear all the, uh, the, the, the commotion in the background. Please have mercy on me. It is indeed, it is indeed, I was wondering. La ilaha illallah. Ya Mustafa! It is indeed I was wondering. What is it is indeed I was wondering? 
if there if there was a way I can advise them, many relatives deny the obligation of hijab by saying it's cultural and difference of opinion. Please refer to my lecture yeah, Grim Oasis. Uh, is this sister going to Jannah? And also refer to my tafsir of Surah An-Nur and my tafsir of Surah Al-Ahzab. Because in both Surah An-Nur and in Surah Al-Ahzab, we address the ayat that speak about the jilbab of the Muslim women. So please refer to all of those. Now, no, I feel like I'm in a, a studio. Our government allows one to get one passport and to get a passport on the same day, but to be eligible, you have to be traveling within 14 days. Would it be permissible for one to book a flight as proof of travel without the intention of traveling and with the intention of canceling it after I get my passport? That seems like lying and cheating. Wallahu alam. Can you just explain tafsir rather than reading the tafsir in Arabic? Why? Why, uh, Arsalan? You might not be interested in working on the Arabic language, but others are. Other people want to hear me speak the Arabic so they can become familiar with the pronunciation with the uh, articulation with the diacritical signs they want to improve their language and they also want to get the english sorry if i'm not uh, meeting your expectations maybe find another place where they do it the way you like it sorry can rukia be used to cure a disease like vitiligo why does that sound Italian? Viti legal. What is viti legal? A disease that causes loss of skin color and patches. Yes. A ruqya can be for anything. Next. Yalla, ya jama'at al khair, I want to eat. I've heard mention a I've I've heard mention a principle regarding the parents. You guys, we really need to work on our English language English sentences structure, sentence structure. I think there's a lot of lot of errors you guys have. Not that I'm we all have our own errors, but if if you you know, for example, I love to be corrected when I'm wrong. If I'm wrong or if I'm I I don't know a word and someone helps me, I get happy and excited that I'm I'm learning. So don't get offended when I say that the sentence structure problems we have are rather massive. I've heard mention a principle regarding the parents. That it is a worship to obedience and only in that which benefits the parents and doesn't harm the children. What is your view? I, I don't know of that. I don't know what that means because that's too broad of a condition. It's too broad of a condition. It could be the case, but there could be exceptions. Allahu alam. Uh, I just want to say that I love you. Hey, hey, Baba, Ishada. Too much love in one day. Omar Sulaiman, uh, Bilal Asad, and Tom Fachin, for the sake of Allah. And please say them hi in this life. <laughs> what is this, man? Are you trolling us, bro? What do I look like to you? Do you know who you're talking to? Like, do you really know? Do you know? I get, how do you love me if you don't know me? Because I'm, I'm, I'm too much of a savage to be saying, uh, "Hi, Omar Sulaiman. Uh, hi, Bilal Asad. What do you mean, hi, bro? These are these are people that we tell the people not to listen to. Aslan. And who in the world is Tom Fashin? <laughs> Anyways, man, you want to love him for the sake of Allah, yeah, that's between you and them. But I would say, please watch my essentials lectures to understand who exactly should you love and who should you should hate. We came to the wrong channel. <laughs> oh man, what's ruling on laughing when someone falls? I love Stan. That's a tough one, bro. I mean, it could be unavoidable, right? Some, some, some falls just, just extract the laugh right out of you. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what to tell you. 
I felt earlier my whole family was laughing. I'm wearing my slippers and I went ice skating in the foyer and all they heard was boom, And then the whole family was laughing at the dad. And I was like, all right, all right. That was funny. I was the first one to laugh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's Adi. But I mean, if you're going to hurt someone's feelings, then just, I guess not. Reminds me of my dad back in the day. Barakallah fiqh. Yalla ya hajji, khalas, khalas, enough. I heard from Albani. I heard from Ibn Baz. Ibn Baz. Ibn Baz. Ibn Baz. Or Albani, rahimahullah, that Al Ghazali didn't repent. Then I saw Muhammad Imam Basir Al Ghazali did repent in the video. Who are you supposed to trust? You're supposed to trust the proper understanding because you obviously don't understand. You obviously don't understand. Al Ghazali might have repented from certain things. Before he died. And even if he did, his books that are out there are still full of Sufism and Ash'ariya. So even if he repented, he might have repented from a particular belief or his direction overall. So Sheikh bin Bazar al-Bani may be speaking about something and Tim Hummel might be speaking about something else and you just got two general matters and you specify them on your own. No. Now. All right, well, there you go. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ustad, if a man touches a woman inappropriately, ishada. after can she hit him? And what should she, what should she do when she's alone and with her mahram? What is that? What kind of question is this, man? If a man touches a woman inappropriately, can she hit him? No. She cannot hit him because by hitting him, she's also touching him. And what if he's one of these sadist people, is that what they call them? Who like to be tortured and beat. It's just going to make it worse. And it's not allowed for her to touch a man in the first place. Plus, what is she going to do? Because if she hits him and he knocks her out, then we'll have one thing and go to another thing. Um, so no, no, she shouldn't. She should definitely, though, uh, you know, get help uh, from any anyone who's decent around her. And what should she do if she's alone? To just move away from this guy and and call him out. Say, hey, this man just touched me. Let the men handle business. And if she has a mahram, then a mahram should handle business. Otherwise, he shouldn't be a mahram. Ishada. All right, enough. Tomorrow, no class, inshallah. Tomorrow, apologies, no class. It's the only day off in the entire week. We will catch you, bi'idhnillah, on Wednesday, however. Um, and then we will take it from there. I look forward to the rest of the surah because it is an absolutely magnificent surah. You guys be safe. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.